Hi guys, I'm back yet again with another hair video, but I figured it'd be the perfect time to film this because I know a lot of people wanted to see how I cut my hair at home and um, I'll give you an idea of how I do it. It's not gonna be a full on haircut, but you'll get an idea of how to do it through my trim. And then I am also gonna be coloring my hair, just a root touch up. I have a lot of grays. I don't know if you could see it, but it's like starting to come in. Um, but I did recently dye my hair for the first time by myself at home a few weeks ago with box dye and the color didn't come out exactly how I wanted it to. It took on like a little bit of like a reddish undertone and it was also a little bit too light. So I'm gonna do it again. It's probably too soon, my grays aren't fully in, but um, I didn't really like the color so I'm just gonna redo it. And I guess you guys are gonna see another botched hair video of uh, people coloring their hair at home. I am by no means an expert at this. I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm not even gonna like fully do my entire head. I'm just gonna do the roots like on top and framing my face. Um, and we will see how it goes. I'm gonna start with the front. So I just part the front. Um, usually like I grab the amount that I would like take when I like blow dry the front out the, it's really just the pieces that like frame my face oh you know what before I start I actually have a drape and I'm just gonna put that on so I don't make a total mess on myself and I use this for my husband when I give him haircuts at home. So I'm just gonna part my hair. I'll move the camera up a little bit so you guys can see. And I always make sure that this is even, so I use this part of the comb. I'm going to clip the rest back and I'm going to start with the face framing pieces first. So it's about that much hair that I grab. And then what I usually do is I point cut. I never go straight across. Um, the only time I go straight across is when I'm doing the bottom of my hair, which I'll show you soon. I take it little by little. Less is more when you start because you don't want to take off too much in the beginning. And then you can go back in and continue trimming. So I'm going to part it again because I have some shorter pieces underneath and I just want to make sure I get those pieces as well. And then um, I'm going to part my hair how I usually part it and continue trimming a little bit after that. Okay, and then I'm gonna take all my hair down. And now I'm gonna part my hair how I usually part it. And then I'm gonna bring everything to the front. Okay, so I brought everything to the front. You could already see these pieces are starting to frame around my face. 
And then I'm just going to continue cutting them on an angle up um, until I'm happy with the length and how they're framing my face. So I grab like the shorter, the shortest pieces and I just start point cutting it. And I point cut because I don't want it to be too harsh of a cut around my face. Okay, so I'm going to switch scissors because these are getting really, really dull. Okay, so now I'm going to continue on the other side. And again, going on an angle up. check to make sure like these pieces are even and one's not longer on the other side. So those are the front pieces and now I'm gonna trim the ends. And again, this is just like a very baby trim. Um, I'm not taking off a lot, but even if I were to give myself like a full on haircut, this is exactly how I would cut it. I would just be taking off more. So the ends of my hair, I literally just cut in a straight line because I like uh, the end sort of blunt cut so that it gives it like, not that I need more hair, but it gives it like a fuller effect. I just grab, I pull the hair through my fingers and then I start to cut in a straight line. And then I'll put it down and run it through my fingers again until I feel everything is really, really straight. And then I'm just going to repeat the same thing on the other side. maybe every six to eight weeks just to keep the ends fresh. I always like it. I always love the feeling and look of like a fresh cut on the ends. Um, so now I'm going to dye my roots. Uh, cutting my hair is something I've done for years by myself, but I've never dyed my hair. I've only done it once and that was a few weeks ago and 
Obviously that didn't go well, so we're gonna see how this goes today. I'm using medium ash brown uh, in L'Oreal Preference, Superior Preference. So I know it also comes with conditioner, but anytime I color my hair, I always, always, always use Olaplex Shampoo and Conditioner. Um, so that's what I'm gonna be using after I color my hair, and it looks like this. And I also mentioned these in um, all about in the all about my hair video, and these this is just like the best hair care line um, for hair that you want to strengthen or hair that's colored, or if you just want your hair to feel really really good. Um, their products are amazing. I use their entire line. That's what I'm going to be using for shampoo and conditioner when I wash the color out. Okay, let's start mixing. So I'm going to mix everything in the bowl. Okay, I'm gonna start parting my hair. I'm probably taking it down about um, maybe half an inch. Because again, really, I'm just trying to cover the grays and go over um, the last color that I did. I'm gonna continue this on the other side because I just don't want my camera to die. Um, and I'll be back when I finish doing the other side of my head, but I'm just continuing doing the same exact thing I just did on this side. So I will be back, wish me luck. This is the aftermath. Okay, so I'm gonna go shower and I'm gonna wash it out with the Olaplex shampoo and conditioner that I mentioned in the beginning of the video. Um, and then I am gonna blow dry my hair off camera because that is a long process and I have a video up already showing you how I do that. And then I wanna straighten my hair on camera because I have the Dyson Corral hair straightener and I really wanna give you guys an honest review on that. I have a lot of thoughts on it. So I will be back. I hope this comes out good. I'm back. It's not bad. It's actually a pretty good color. Um, I just blow dried my hair. It's actually the next day. My daughter, who's um, about eight and a half months, is going through a sleep regression right now. Um, so her nap schedule and sleeping has been very inconsistent. So I have had um, a lot of time to get things done. But I just blow dried it and then I just went to sleep with it blow dried and I'm gonna show you guys the new Dyson Corral straightener and let you know my thoughts about it. But I'll show you guys what it looks like just blow dried. Um, I have a lot of hair and it's really, really big, but this is what it looks like after blow drying it. For me, it's a little bit too big and it won't really last or hold well for a week because I don't usually wash my hair for an entire week. Um, so I prefer to just straighten it and then leave it for the week. So I've gone ahead and straightened most of my hair off camera and I left the top portion to do on camera with you guys because I want to compare three straighteners that I find are sort of in my rotation of straighteners. Um, so I have 
the Remington Wet to Straight, which I did in one of my previous videos. Um, and then I have the GHD Platinum, um, which I did in my how to fake a blowout video. And then I have the newest one, the Dyson Corral. Um, so they're all heated up. And I guess I'll start with that. Um, I would say the GHD and the Dyson Corral take the fastest to heat up and the Remington is the slowest, um, but the Remington and the Dyson Corral have different heat settings and the GHD does not. I would say another obvious difference is that the Dyson Corral is cordless and the Remington and GHD obviously have cords, but this straightener only lasts 30 minutes to be able to use it wirelessly and then you have to recharge. You can use it plugged in, but it's a magnetic cord. I'll, I'll show you guys. So it looks like that and it attaches to the end. And I find that it always comes out and then my straightener ends up dying and then I have to redo it. So I would say that you, that's a huge downside of the straightener, whereas the GHD and the Remington, I can just keep going and going and going. But the Dyson Corral, I find that it's a little bit of a hassle, especially when you have as much hair as I do, and it takes you an hour, maybe even longer, to straighten your hair. Um, what is this saying? I think it's about to turn off. So that's another thing. Um, they all will turn off um, if they're not in use. Um, I don't know how long, maybe like 15 or 20 minutes, the Dyson will turn off. And then the Remington and GHD, I believe it's about an hour of being on and then it turns off. But I want to give you guys an honest review, not paid, not sponsored, not gifted, just an honest review of someone who loves doing hair and does hair a lot. Uh, this is the best straightener I have ever, ever used. And I'm going to show you guys why. So... It says that you only need one pass-through, maybe two, um, whereas the GHD, and I'll show you guys, I find myself working a lot harder um, and doing multiple pass-throughs to get it pin straight. So that's one pass-through, but I still don't feel it being the same as the Dyson. And then I'm going to grab another piece with the Remington and see how many pass-throughs that's going to take. Actually, that's too thick of a piece. Okay. So that's one pass-through. That's another one. And that's the third one. So the Dyson, in terms of texture, hands down the best. Um, I would say if you're someone that straightens their hair a lot, then the Dyson is definitely worth it because it is the least damaging straightener I have ever used. It's so funny, Dyson just like comes through with these hair products and bulldozes through other brands um, and other hair tools. It's just like, I don't know what they do or how they do it with their technology, but it's ridiculous. Like, how do you have a straightener that is so quick to straighten your hair, but is like also the least damaging? I don't, I don't understand it. Um, but it's, it leaves it so silky soft and with so much sheen, like it's, it might be hard to see on camera, uh, cause obviously I'm getting the other pieces straight, but I can literally feel it with the texture. I've never ever felt my hair this soft. Um, but again, like, is it worth the cost for someone that doesn't straighten their hair a lot? I would say probably not because the GHG and the Remington do the same exact thing in terms of like getting my hair straight. Yeah, it may not feel the same, but if you don't straighten your hair a lot, then sure, it's not worth the cost. But if you are someone that spends a lot of time straightening their, your hair and you want less damage, then yeah, it's probably worth it. Um, but it is there is the hassle of if you have a lot of hair, it doesn't last a really long time. Like you can already see, it hasn't even been on that long and the battery is going. So now I'm gonna to have to end up plugging it in and having to deal with the weight of this because it's very heavy. 
um, and messing with this, trying to keep the magnet in and then trying to avoid it from dying again to recharge again. It takes about like, um, I think 40 minutes to get it like halfway charged and 70 minutes to get it fully charged and that's a really, really long time. Um, so I would say that's a huge downside to the straightener. If it lasts an hour without the wire, um, then obviously that would be much better because it takes me about an hour to do my entire head of hair. Um, so I'm just gonna continue on and show you guys the Dyson. And then I'll also see how it does with like all the like little flips when I do um, my how to fake a blowout. Now I still find myself going through pieces um, repeatedly, but I think that's more of habit than anything else because it is getting my hair perfectly straight with one pass through. And I would say with Dyson products, um, you have to let them do the work. You have to let them do what they're here to do, if that makes sense. So with like the GHG or the Remington, I'm sort of like clamping down hard uh, to try and get it really straight. Whereas the Dyson, you don't have to clamp down as hard. It like has this technology where it's able to pull the hair through and do the work for you. And even with, I don't know if you guys have ever seen or used the Dyson Airwrap, but that's another Dyson product where you just have to let the product do the work for you. Um, I can do a video on that. I don't know if you guys would want to see it, but I just feel like it's such overkill with the amount of hair videos I have. And I have some other things that I want to be putting up. Um, okay, what is it telling me? Look, the battery is going already. It's crazy. I don't even know how long that was. You might be able to see this side better. fully straightened um, and then I said it in my how to fake a blowout video but I don't like my hair pinned straight but I do it like this just so I'm able to do any sort of style on it throughout the week so I'm gonna do like my how to fake a blowout just like a quick version of it um, and see how it comes out with the Dyson Corel So this is the finished result. All in all, if you're someone that straightens their hair a lot, then I would say the Dyson is definitely worth it because it has the least amount of damage to your hair. Um, and there is some sort of like ease to it in terms of like having to do one or two pass throughs. Um, and it leaves your hair really, really, really silky soft. I've never felt my hair like that after using a straightener. But if you're not someone that straightens their hair a lot, then I would say a mid-range straightener like the GHD is totally worth it because you can still get your hair pin straight. It's not as damaging like the Remington um, and you can style with it. And it, it really, it's a great straightener. So I, it's still definitely gonna be in my rotation, but I am someone that straightens their hair a lot. So I do want the least amount of damage. So I, I do find myself going to the Dyson. I just hate the fact that it doesn't last about an hour um, and that you have to wait for it to charge up if it does die and also the weight. So those are like some of the downsides to it. And obviously the price, it's really expensive, um, but I am someone that does my hair a lot. So I would say it's worth it for me. So really like I would say it depends on 
your hair type and how much you do your hair to make it worth it for you. But is it a really good straightener? Yeah, Dyson is just like ridiculous with the products that they come out with and they just, they kill it. They're seriously killing it in terms of their hair products. So I'm gonna leave it here. I hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe below and let me know if there's anything else that you guys wanna see while we're stuck inside. Um, I am gonna be back soon with some more beauty videos of some things that I'm gonna be doing at home. So hopefully my next one will maybe be a lash lift. Hopefully I'll lay off the hair videos for a while unless I decide to do some balayage highlights at home. I'm really, really nervous to go there. But um, if I do decide to do it, which I have a feeling it'll end up happening because we're gonna be stuck inside for a while, it seems like, um, then I'll pick up the camera and I'll show you guys how that turns out. If there's anything else that you guys wanna see, just comment down below and let me know. And I will see you guys soon.